All right, guys. HEI distributors suck. I made the YouTube's melt a little bit saying this before, but I'm going to show you why. My big problem why. And I'll show you what I do about it. Whole problem is we use big cams. We like big cams around here. You need a lot of initial advance to make that big cam work decent. Well, one of the biggest problems with the HEI is they've got a shitload of centrifugal advance in them, way too much. So if you want to have any initial advance, by the time you, by the time your weights kick in, you're 50 degrees, which is, you know, breaking stuff, ridiculous. So if I do want to use these things, which I don't want to use them, but sometimes I have to use them, um, I have a little remedy. Works out pretty good. I'll show it. Maybe it'll work for you guys. So here is a stock HEI distributor. So when I talk about centrifugal advance, for anybody that doesn't know, most of you do, um, these weights go on here like this. This one-handed stuff is not my forte. Um, anyway, these weights go on here, and they kick out, and they push out your centrifugal advance. So on this deal, you're looking at, I can't remember how many degrees there are. It's a it's a bunch. It's over 30 degrees of centrifugal advance. It's not quite a bit over as I remember, but I, I don't I don't remember the exact numbers. But I tell you this, this is like a hell of a lot. So what's going to happen is you're going to have to have this thing at idle at 10 degrees maybe. If you use your vacuum advance, you can you can crank your idle up way more. But the minute you jump into gas, your vacuum advance kicks off. And it'll back your timing up. And these things are way back. So a lot of times what you'll find is on the tip end, they'll stumble. And everybody will crank timing head, crank timing head, crank timing head. Well, they don't stumble on tip end anymore because they got decent timing. But they got, they, they, they've got they got way too much time in a pie. So what I do, I take these holes here and weld them up. So you see this one. So now we've limited the advance a whole bunch. So, again, one-handed, but there you go. So we've more taken more than half of that out of there. So we're going to end up with 10, 15 degrees of centrifugal advance. So I'll be able to run this thing at, at, you know, 25, 28 degrees at low speed and have it 36, 38 at high speed, which is a low compression. This is a 305 we're doing. Uh, putting a roller cam and stuff in the 305. Don't ask me why. Um, just what the customer wanted. But uh, so I'm trying to keep most of the stuff stock. But the, <clears throat> it's fairly decent. Fairly decent cam. What is the? It is. Um, two 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 two. Degrees of duration two seventy six. That's that's not at fifty. Uh, 276, 282, um, what the hell is it at 50? At 50, 224, 230. So it's not mega aggressive, but you know, it's, it's within reason and it's just a tad over 500 and left. So, uh, it's not a small cam. It's not a huge cam, but, uh, it will, I will have trouble with that low, low, low timing on tip in. So then it's got, uh, we just went ahead and put like Vortec heads on it. And uh, that roller, hydraulic roller, and the warrior intake, and he already had the carburetor. And I'll limit that timing back like I showed you, and it should snap on there fairly decent. It, it's probably enough ignition for this engine, and, you know, pretty easy, cheap way to take one of those things and make it work. Anyway, uh, take it apart. I mean, I'll just put it together. You just do it that way. So you just, you knock your... Take your gear, you got a little roll pin that goes in right there. You take knock that roll pin out and pull that, pull the gear off the shaft. Then you can slide the shaft out of the distributor housing. If you slide it out far enough, you can take the little clips off and push that down and get it apart. So this one's going back together. I put the, sh I already put the gear back on. I've got the shaft in it. So, like, originally, they've got some little clips that go on down here, which, I mean, you've got a little retainer you put on first. This little bad boy right here. You put that thing on first. I'm trying to remember which way it goes now. So that ain't so good. Uh, right there, like that. 
you put that on, which goes on a little tough. And then you're supposed to put these clips on, which I don't know that we really desperately need. But let me just, I got to use two hands here for a bit. I'll come back. All right, I just took, tap that down there. So it's sitting there good and solid. And these little clips, you have to knock these little devils off right here. You can see that. And they go on like that. I'll put them back. Um, I'm not sure how necessary they are to put back, to be honest with you. Because uh, most of the fingers don't have them. And everything seems to stay in place pretty good. But because your spring, your, when your weight goes on there, your spring kind of holds everything. But we'll put them on here, especially since we have video evidence if i don't put them on there there's a problem and then we put our weights on you can see clearly where that weight's been rubbing here so you know which way it goes down so you put that there and boom there you go so you see that weight goes out and it pushes that out so obviously flies out with rpm now you can adjust these by spring tension too um, I don't have anything but the factory springs and, uh, I'm going to stay with that. They don't seem to be super strong anyway. So I've actually got a lighter set that was in one of those distributors because I, this one, I broke the little pin off trying to take that retainer off. So, um, that little pin down there. So I just went and got another junker, which most of us have a bunch of them. And on one of these junkers, yeah. Again, one-handed. On one of these junkers, we had some extra parts. So that's you can see that's holding me out pretty good. And the only that's the only downside of this. It stretches your spring a bit, so it makes your string a little your spring a little bit stronger. Um, which I could just stretch the thing a bit and take a guess at it. Ideally, what I should do is watch it with the timing light and see where my full advance comes in because I, I want it in by four grand which it should be, and I'll check it, and if it, if it, if it's too tight, I'll just check it with the timing light, if it's too tight, I'll either put a lighter spring, or get some, or I'll just stretch these bad boys a little bit, and make it work, I'll, I'll put it together here, and then we'll kind of see how tight it actually is, if it feels too tight, I'll just go ahead and change it right now, but, like I say, you could weld up the other side of the notch, and not have this problem, but I welded up, apparently, the wrong side, so now I'm stretching my spring quite a bit, Kind of no big deal, other than, like I say, it might make the spring a little tighter than you want it, and your advance comes in a little higher RPM than you want it. That's that's about it. There, so I got it together, and I, it felt a little tight to me, so now I went ahead and I just, what I did, I just stretched the spring until it was just short of popping on to the, the dowel there, just, just about like they are original. And now it, she'll come in pretty quick. I really would like to have the advance in pretty quick, but I want it to be able to start, and I want it to be able to, uh, you know, cruise around a low RPM without worrying about troubles. But I didn't want it deadlocked, and I may use the vacuum advance. I may not. I'm going to see what the motor likes when I set her up. A lot of times, cruising RPM and stuff, there's no harm in having this. A whole bunch of timing at high, high vacuum, I mean, doesn't do any harm. It's not going to spark knock, and they'll run around a little bit cheaper and a little cleaner. So I'm not against using a vacuum advance. But uh, having all that centrifugal seems to be a problem every time I do it. So this is my fix. Works good for me. I don't know. Maybe you like it. Maybe you won't. But there she is.